if I wanted to open a restaurant. They're hard and they're brutal and they're specific, but I know how to do it. Thank you for being here, Lisa or Liza Colon. Sayas, how are you doing? Oh, I'm I'm beside myself. I can't <laughs> believe how people love this show. It's it's I mean, I love it. I think it's brilliant. I did not expect for it to explode. And I have so much respect and and love for it and for what it does in terms of shining a light on this industry. What and do you mean by that? Because this is a show that I find very interesting because I feel like it goes to Gen Z, millennials, and then any other generation, like everybody's watching it. People in Europe, people in uh, Asia, people in the Americas. Like mm -hmm. it's touched people in many different ways. And that's a very rare occurrence for a show. Yeah, I, I, I'll be out and you know people a you know, group from france is like oh we love this show and buddies yeah, it, they, it, and people of all walks of life young i got a group of teenagers high school young high school kids came came at me um just of all age ranges of all professions and i feel like it's the authenticity um the way people may feel seen. Um, the way they may recognize their own trauma. Uh, wrestling with our own demons. And trying to keep a family together, whatever that family is, whether it's by blood or a made family. And I think that that resonates with humans. <laughs> What has Tina given to you as an actor? I know you've been in theater, you've been in film, you've been in TV, but this is a very important moment in your career. And I think, I, I'm not sure if it was Vanity Fair, but you were talking to someone saying that this is like almost 30 years in the making, like this is the moment. What has Tina given to you? Uh, a release from shame. Um, I didn't grow up seeing women who look like me. And, and so I felt like I was dispensable. And I think that as women of color, especially at my age, it's an awful way to feel. And for Tina to dream again, with becoming the Sioux and being entrusted, I've been able to dream again. It's not even about the food, it's about humanity. It's a very interesting uh, way of approaching the topic. Um, and I was wondering, you know, you guys spend a lot of time in the kitchen, obviously. Do you like to cook? Uh, do you consider yourself someone who loves the kitchen? And, and what dishes do you like to cook, if, if any? Yeah, I, I, I stick to what I know. <laughs> you know, I could I could throw down with some arro con gandule, I could, uh -huh. you know, penil, you know, habichuela. I could throw down with that. I, I, you know, other things, not so much. I can't, you know, I... <laughs> hey, but those are complicated dishes. I don't know how to make that. <laughs> they are, and I look, the, the problem is, like, even though, like, I've always had a curiosity, always, uh -huh. like... I, when I was 18 or something, I took a James Beard book out of the library and never returned it. Uh -huh. But it's, you know, the follow through is harder, getting, gathering all of these ingredients and tools and time and the commitment. And that is a thing that I really, even though I watch, you know, whatever, Top Chef, you know, Masterclass, this and that, I'm really now understanding the commitment and the sacrifice and how it's all consuming for people who love to cook. It's not just a hobby like, oh, I like food, it's cute. You know, this is all consuming day and night. And whether you're in a high-end kitchen 
or you you're a new immigrant it, 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 it's all consuming and it's hard backbreaking work and i just i'm i'm grateful that this show is shining a light on that